Hello. I went to an estate sale and acquired a Singer Featherweight for a steal of a deal. I got the machine without having the intentions of actually keeping it. I intended to actually resell it, but, uh, but I have fallen in love with this machine and I don't know if I can part ways with it. Uh, if I do end up keeping it, then I will have to get rid of another machine because I just do not have space to keep so many machines in my home. Uh, I would rather have fabric in there instead. It came with the all of the original accessories, including this button holder here, which I think is very, very nice. And you have to, pardon me, I'm working with one hand here. All right. The oil, there's still oil in here. And I'm not sure about whether or not I want to keep oil in here. I'm thinking that I will just decommission this and keep it as a souvenir because I don't want oil leaking out of here and leak it onto everything. Uh, I'm not sure what people usually do. Do they actually use the oil cans or not? Um, the grease. It's still here. I'm not sure if this is the original grease from when the machine was purchased or if they've since purchased multiple uh, containers of grease. But this right here is still halfway full. And it concerns me a little bit because this machine was purchased in 1952. And this much grease is left in this bottle. So what are your thoughts on that is this grease even safe to use after that many years um was it just kept as a souvenir or do they ask did they actually use it in the machine uh please let me know your thoughts about this in the comments i'm actually a little bit nervous about using it because it looks so very old i was thinking about actually buying some more grease but does grease expire or can you use it from 1952 onward? <laughs> uh, all of the attachments are in here. And that's very nice. And it does have the bobbin case and uh, a bobbin in there. But I know if I kept it, I would have to get more bobbins because, of course, I would need to use more than one bobbin. This case smells horrible, horrible. And that is why I have the machine and everything outside. I plan on cleaning this machine out and uh, giving it a nice polish and oiling it, of course, and maybe putting a few drops of grease into the motor. Uh, this, as soon as I open it, it smells to high heaven. From what I hear, the case was covered in a fabric and the glue that they used to cover it is what stinks. Uh, someone said to put some cedar chips inside of the box, but I'm not so sure that that would work too well. Uh, overall, I think that if I were to end up keeping this uh, machine, that I would most likely decommission this case and end up keeping the case in a cedar chest. I'm sorry, keeping the sewing machine in a cedar chest and then taking this case and just putting it on the shelf or putting it somewhere for safekeeping just so that all of the original accessories and everything are with the machine. But I absolutely cannot keep this case in my sewing room or sewing area because it just smells horrible, horrible, horrible. Let me close this. So I'm going to take this in the house and then I'm going to use some saddle soap and maybe some uh, OxyClean to spray inside of the box to see if I can cut some of the smell. Uh, I'm going to take this inside and then I'll come back and start working on cleaning out the case.
So it's now the next morning and the box is now good enough to bring in the house. It doesn't smell to high heavens anymore. Um, I have some essential oil in here going in this diffuser and I hope that that will cut the rest of the smell out of there. And I'm just going to leave it on with the box closed for a while and see what that does. But as you can see here, these uh, latches are very shiny now. It almost looks like brand new. So this is me in real time working on getting this machine oiled. I really am looking directly at the manual and trying to work out how to oil and grease the machine. There's a few drops of grease down in here, but it looks like old grease. So I'm going to pull it out and actually replace it with some new grease. Which I like to use the Tri-Flow synthetic gear grease on gears in all of my machines. And it looks pretty clean inside of the machine, so I don't really feel the need to clean it out with kerosene like I normally have to on my vintage machines. This one's actually in pretty good shape. That's good to go, so I'm just going to loosely tighten the screw up. I'm not going to tighten it really, really tight. Just kind of loose and then add some oil right here and of course in this oil hole if you haven't already please do subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to receive updates I try to make a video uh, as frequently as possible, but sometimes when I get deals like this, I like to actually use the machine first before speaking on it and giving it a review. So I'm just temporarily going to take off the presser foot and loosen this area up to see if there's any lint or dust down in there and it's pretty clean in there which is surprising because on most machines that I service it's always dirty but this one is not all right now the machine is showing some oil points underneath this guy so I'm going to have to take it off so that we can do that. This piece stinks. Ick. I think I'm gonna have to put a new piece of felt in here. But I think this is the culprit for the smell underneath the machine. It's like a piece of felt. I'll probably just cut another piece. 
So I have my template here from Steel Stitching. It's in the description box below. I am just going to use my rotary cutter to cut this out. But uh, if you have a cutter, like a vinyl cutter or a laser cutter, then you can use that to cut it out. I have a video on laser cutters and vinyl cutters. Uh, I will leave a link to it somewhere here on screen. Well, I really do hate to cut things off so abruptly, but that is the end of this video, and I hope that you really enjoyed watching it. Next week, I am going to come back and run the featherweight through its paces to see whether or not it's worth all of the hype and all of the super high prices that people charge for it online, so don't forget to tune in. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to receive more sewing-related content.